So finally, I'll start. Um, I'm, I'm Charles Papasso de Rowe. I'm the team lead for the National Innovation Data Strategy at the Canada Center for Mapping and Earth Observation. And today, I'll, I'll provide you with a brief uh, update of, of our strategy, uh, where we are at and where, where we're heading. Um, in a nutshell, what is the National Innovation Data Strategy for those who, uh, who are not a uh, aware of it, it's uh, it's basically um, a, a new strategy to provide high resolution 3D data uh, Canada wide uh, using collaborations with province and territories, uh, new new acquisitions as well uh, made on our sides, uh, but also coordinating acquisitions with province and territories throughout Canada. Um, really, to, to fo we are focusing on 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 regions that are very uh, in support of government priorities, uh, for instance, for flood management, forest inventory, uh, climate change, geohazard, urban management. And the, the three pillars that you're seeing there, uh, there's uh, the standardized data acquisition. So we, yes, we do some data, LIDAR data acquisition, but we are also involved in, in standardization. Um, with regards to the federal LIDAR guideline with the, for which we, we are responsible of managing. Um, we also provide authoritative and accurate 3D products, uh, just like the previous presentation, we're responsible for the HRDM as well. Um, so this is the kind of product that we provide through this strategy. Um, the strategy is, is basically divided in two parts, the north and the south. Um, there, in the south, we're, we're focusing on providing LIDAR for the entire uh, south. Um, and in the north, well, well LIDAR derived DEMs uh, for, uh, as a first plan. Um, and in the, in the north, it's all derived from satellite imagery, uh, namely the Arctic DEM project in the north that was, that was used uh, two years ago to provide the entire north. Um, but it's not... It, it, it can, well, it, it will happen. It's actually happening and it will happen that we have LIDAR data in the north as well, as you will see later on. So we we mainly focus on LIDAR in the south and satellite imagery derived in elevation in the north, but it can happen that we have uh, LIDAR in the north as well. We do have to collaborate a lot. So like I said, Canada is a very, very vast country, a very big country. So. A lot of provinces are already involved in acquisitions, so we try to leverage those acquisitions uh, to provide money or to, 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 share, uh, to share funds for collaborative acquisitions, for example. We also, uh, uh, um, standard data standardization is really important, really key, uh, especially through the, the, the federal LIDAR guideline, um, which, is part of the, which is part of the flood mapping guideline series. And we also share open data, and we um, we uh, recommend uh, highly recommend open systems as well. Um, some reason, sorry, screen is like white. I don't know why. So for that, that's no problem. I don't know why my PDF was totally white and for a moment. You want to try loading it up again? I think it's because I I I lost uh, I lost. Uh, Oh, I have a problem here. I need to connect. Oh. I'm out of my 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 uh, my last connection to the uh, to the the, the the to the government. Uh, oh, the server. Server, yeah. Um, and I I actually have no way to get there because it's. It's not local on my laptop. Ah. Sorry for that. I could could we like maybe uh, I, I could jump in right at the end of the, the this session to finish or 
we can check. Meantime, yeah, in the meantime, I'll, I'll go get the, the document because I had to to log out of the VPN for to access this this portal, and now I'm out of right. it, so I cannot access it. So. Why don't we uh, check to see if Ryan's been able to join us? Ryan, are you there? Ryan, if you're uh, there, you can unmute your mic and give us a shout. The joys of uh, government laptops. Yeah, you're right. VPN is really... Uh, it's because I, I, I can access to it, but it, I'll be back in like three minutes. I'll need to, 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 to log out of it. Okay, <laughs> well, why don't, hey, Ted, why don't you step in and uh, give us a bit of an update on uh, what's happening with the workshop after this session? Would that be all right? And Charles, you can hop off right away and go take care of your business. I can yeah, entertain. A couple of minutes. It won't be too long. I'm really, really sorry for that. No problem. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. And sorry, folks at home. Uh, hopefully, Ted is uh, available to jump on and talk to us a little bit about, um, about what's coming up next. I guess Ryan should be joining shortly as well. But in the meantime, you get to stare at my face. I don't have a lot to add, actually, Shane. <clears throat> oh, we have Ryan. There he is. Oh, perfect. Yeah, hey, guys. Sorry, the, uh, the stream was not connecting for some reason. That's okay. We're all learning feed loop, and uh, maybe a few years down the road, all these glitches will be taken care of. But uh, why don't you just take it away, Ryan? Um, you can try sharing your screen so we can test that out right quick. Let's see. Da, da, da. So at the bottom under your uh, video stream, there we go. Um, looks good. I'm seeing this, the window that you're looking at right now. So you, you can switch over to your uh, presentation if you have one. Okay, so let's see. Ta -da. For some reason, it is not actually going to my screen. Do you, can you? No, that's okay. Can you try um, shifting to your other tab? Do you have your presentation in a tab or in a separate window? I have it in a tab, but for some reason, that tab is not exposed in the share choices. Okay. Um, you you might have to uh, send the tab to a separate. Uh, window and in the meantime Charles are you back are you ready yes, to continue get, yeah I'm ready I'm sorry I'm back that's okay Ryan um, we can troubleshoot this offline and we'll let Charles jump back in how does that sound perfect sounds great okay sorry everyone at home <laughs> okay all right so and Ryan you'll just have to switch off your video there perfect okay Take it away. Okay, I'm back. So um, I was talking about the, the high-level strategy, high-level part of the strategy. One of the fundings that we have, and, and, and one of the topic that's really really uh, key for us is is uh, a nat the the emergency management strategy uh, called the nat national risk profile overland flooding. So a lot of our funds are actually coming from this. Uh, this is a plan led by by Public Safety Canada, which uh, with, with, for which uh, Enercan contributes uh, in gathering information to create a national picture on flood risk. Um, and our part as uh, within the strategy for this is uh, provide from that foundational geospatial data and acquisition of high resolution lidar, and also. Uh, the, the publication of guidelines, namely the, the LIDAR guidelines. So those are the, the data and activities that I'm, I'll be talking today. Um, just to make sure it's understood that th this, this program is not a program for flood mapping, uh, recurrent flood mapping throughout Canada. It's really um, a, a national risk profile, really, to, to understand the risks throughout, throughout Canada. 
An example of LiDAR data that we've acquired in the recent years is a, is a project over the Ottawa River region. It's a major, major project uh, with uh, high, high accuracy specs, a 5 centimeter RMSE, a vertical RMSE, as well as density uh, that ended up being way over than 10 pulses uh, per square meter. It's approximately 10,000 square kilometers. Uh, divided between a couple of stakeholders, but but Tannercan has been uh, the through the EMS project has been the the main uh, contributor for all of this data, and it's, it will very shortly all be available to our into our HRDM data sets. And finally, with, with regards to program, uh, in the latest budget, it was announced that. Um, the latest budget proposed, uh, proposed to provide 63.8 million in three years uh, to, to American, ECCC, and Public Safety Canada to work with uh, P's and T's, so province and territories, to complete flood maps uh, for higher risk areas over Canada. Um, this is something that our teams are working on to establish the basis, but I don't have anything to add today. Um, it's just a dimension. It's just to, to, uh, to, to inform that it's something on which we are working uh, right now. And uh, some more info will come. Our expertise in the, in the support of Government of Canada. So like I said before, a lot of coordina coordinate, uh, coordination with the, uh, with the federal departments, these and these municipalities, and the indigenous communities for data acquisition. Um, we uh, we tender uh, a lot of RFPs, a couple of, of RFPs, and, and la which lead to a lot of contracts um, through our uh, supply arrangement, which uh, for which we have 18 pre-qualified vendors currently. We have a lot of quality control system that we uh, that we offer to the government of Canada. So any other federal department that needs help. Uh, can can ask us can ask us and we use uh, we use it for them. Uh, we also use them for our lidar contracts. We manage the federal lidar guideline. And we develop, generate, and disseminate elevation products such as the HRDM. And we do a lot of R and D on on new potential data sources and, and products. Um, it's always evolving on that side as well. So what's new? Um, this is um, this is a kind of, of, of an overview of the high resolution high resolution elevation data uh, in Canada right now by the level of, by the different levels of government. Uh, we, uh, to our knowledge, there are ninety actually uh, there's ninety percent of the the hundred largest cities that are covered by lidar in Canada, and sixty one of them are part are. Are, are already included in our na national elevation data strategy, um, which is uh, our data and the strategy is the green uh, is is illustrated here as green polygons. Um, we and, and blue polygons in, in the north for the from the RTDM uh, project, but in the south from from lidar, it's it's the uh, it's represented by the green poly green polygons. It's almost a uh, Currently, from uh, at the moment, it's almost half a million square kilometers that we have in our national strategy. So, and it keeps growing. Uh, so, we're really proud of it. We have two acquisitions in the, in the in progress uh, this summer. One in over uh, over Last Mountain Lake region in Saskatchewan, and another major one over Niagara Hamilton region in Ontario. Um, so, those are the two. Uh, current ones. Um, our, our HRDM products, so the previous presentation mentioned the HRDM. Um, we now have, since last December, we, we, uh, we released the new product called HRDM Mosaic, um, which is uh, actually a, a, a mosaic that, that uh, a mosaic of the HRDM offered to the, uh, through WMS and WCS. It's, uh, as far as the coverage, it will follow the HRDM. So when there's a, a new HRDM release, so new data integrated, the HRDM mosaic follows as well. Uh, and it's, uh, it's hosted on NRCAN's DataCube platform. So it's uh, the derived product that you're seeing are all on the fly 
uh, created on the fly. It's a really, really nice product. Just have a, go have a look to this uh, on Open Maps Canada. It's all available online. Our next HRDM release will uh, will include uh, 107,000 square kilometer of new HRDM, mainly over uh, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Ontario, Quebec, and also Nova Scotia, for which uh, we are uh, very grateful because I, and we are very grateful that they they, uh, they did acquire almost it's probably the entire uh, province, but well, at least it's almost the entire province. So we're really glad of their effort, and we uh, we uh, we're proud to it to integrate it in our national product. The Federal Airborne LiDAR Data Acquisition Guideline. Um, we released also in last December our version 3.0 uh, of this guideline, which now includes um, a topo bathymetric LiDAR appendix, which was, uh, which was actually um, developed in, uh, with, in consultation with Dr. Tim Webster that presented uh, this morning. So uh, um, really, not, really nice effort uh, that we did uh, we, we, with Tim a couple of months ago. And, and this appendix is, uh, is now part of the document. Um, a lot of good practices for, flat, for topo bathymetric LiDAR related to flood, uh, flood risk analysis. So those are, this is one of the main new features of this new version 3.0. But the other, uh, a couple of other new features also, um, for instance, uh, we added indications that the use of satellite-derived PPP correction is now allowed as long as the, the, the accuracy can be met. And we also proposed a new alternative for evaluating the point cloud classification for larger projects. I'll be, um, I'll, I'll, um, I took too much time, so I'll just go on the next steps. Um, the new data will continue to increase, to increase our, uh, the coverage in the South with new partnerships and new acquisition contracts throughout Canada. Um, with, uh, those will be integrated in our HRDM and HRDM Mosaic, and the next release is planned in the next couple of weeks. We are also planning to, uh, we're, we're seeing now, what we're trying to establish how we will do this, but we're trying to uh, figure out a way to, uh, to provide point clouds, uh, point, point cloud download index for, uh, for at least for the, the federal uh, products. But also, it, it's still something that we need to figure out, but we're trying to, to, uh, to create a new point cloud download index for Canada. For Canada. Um, One minute. And so, yeah, I'm pretty much done. We'll still continue working with levels of, of governments and co coordinate efforts, establish federal funding mechanisms. So uh, I, I talked about this uh, with, with regards to the flood mapping uh, programs and also uh, we have a newsletter. Uh, next one will be out in a couple of weeks also. Um, if you want to receive it, just email us at this email right here. Uh, it, also, it always contains a lot of new information regarding the strategy, but also some other things that we do at CCMEO uh, with regards to the, the using LiDAR, LiDAR extraction, big data, AI with, uh, with LiDAR. So a lot of great stuff are, are are written in those uh, those updates, so uh, be sure to uh, to email us so, to to receive them. So thank you very much, and sorry for the the, the technical difficulties today that I had with my VPN. <laughs> No, that's no problem. We're all, you know, it's a good reminder um, for all presenters uh, to make sure you check in with your moderator before you present uh, and test test your session out if you can uh, or before you get going. But thanks so much, Charles, for your presentation. And we do have a question in the chat. So, John, uh, also uh, from Maxar, is there a roadmap to complete the HRDEM time and budget? That That's a good question. Um, the the, the 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 fast answer is no. There's not there's not a plan to complete Canada wide DHRDM as of now. Um, why I just got back to this, this this slide here is what you're seeing here. Here is the one of the things you're seeing here are the the polygons, the beige polygons from BC, uh, Saskatchewan, and Quebec. Uh, those are provinces with which we have uh, a lot of discussions and we are 
um, in progress to integrate pretty much, uh, at least some of those data that are on government of, uh, that are well, over the, the priorities of, of the government. But we have access now to provide all of the Quebec uh, DEMs, the Quebec LIDAR data into our, na our national strategy. So it's, it's, it's uh, growing. Um, BC, it will come in the, in the near future, we hope. Saskatchewan will be done as well. So um, there's no uh, fast answer. There's no plan to complete the, com to do the, the complete HRDN, but this, those are the areas that we're uh, actually uh, targeting. Yeah. Um, I'm seeing the, the other question. Do you want me go ahead? You want me uh, go ahead? Uh, Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead, Charles, and you can answer the other questions. Okay. So is there a depth limit for the bathymetry LIDAR data? Um, maybe something I didn't talk about is this is all, uh, our strategy is exclusively, um, at, at least for now, topo bat uh, topo LIDAR, topographic LIDAR. So we don't have any topo bats included in our strategy. So uh, it's something that we are, we have in the eyes. We, it's something we we, we want to do, but it, we're running out of time for this uh, now. But it's uh, maybe in the near future. And as far as the other question, will the point cloud that will be released contain multiple returns? Uh, yes, uh, pretty much the the majority of them. Um, we um, it's still what. Well, there's a lot of heterogeneity uh, with, uh, throughout Canada for the LiDAR point clouds. So some provinces ask some specs and the others, uh, other provinces as, are, are asking their specs. So specs can be different. Uh, we, we usually recommend using the, the federal LiDAR guideline, which recommend multiple returns. So um, this is what we do for our acquisition. But it's mainly, yes, mainly multiple reasons. Okay, thank you very much.